This video is on gross features and relations of parotid gland. So parotid gland which can be seen here is located on the side of the face below and in front of the external ear. This is the largest of the three salivary glands that is the submandibular, sublingual and parotid gland. It weighs approximately 25 grams and as can be seen here, this is an irregular lobulated yellowish creamish mass. Now, usually the shape of this resembles an inverted three-sided pyramid. So, why inverted? Because the apex of this pyramidal shaped structure is directed downwards, the base is directed upwards and it will have three surfaces. One of the surface which can be seen here is placed laterally and there will be two surfaces which will be present on the medial aspect. So what is the shape of the parotid gland? Roughly the shape is three-sided pyramid and how is it located there? It is inverted pyramid, right? Apex is directed downwards. Now here we can see the presenting parts to start with as I said it has an apex and a base. So apex is directed downwards it will reach the carotid triangle of the neck so it reaches the neck okay and the base is directed upwards which will come in contact with the cartilaginous part of external acoustic meters. The base is also sometimes known as the superior surface. Then we have three surfaces, right? So this is the superficial surface or we'll call it lateral surface. So we have one lateral surface and we have two medial surfaces. One is anteromedial, which is directed anteriorly towards the mandible and the other is posteromedial, which will be directed towards the mestroid process. So these are the three surfaces, superficial or lateral and two medial surfaces, anteromedial and posteromedial. So we have three borders also. This is the anterior border which can be seen, which will be seen on the face, right? And this is going to separate the lateral or the superficial surface from anteromedial surface. Then we have the posterior border. This is the posterior border. This is going to separate the lateral or the superficial surface from the posteromedial surface. This will be directed posteriorly. On the sternocleidomastoid, this, this will be located there on the sternocleidomastoid muscle. And then we have another border which we can see, which will be separating anteromedial surface from the posteromedial surface. This border is known as medial or pharyngeal surface because this is going to come in contact with the lateral wall of the pharynx. So three surfaces, three borders, one apex and one base. To understand the relations, let us look at the or see some bony structures and the muscles or other structures which will come in contact with the parotid gland. So here we can see roughly this is the parotid region which will be present here and let us see what all can be seen here. So this is the external acoustic meters which is directed upwards we can see here. Anteriorly, we can see here we have the posterior border of ramus of the mandible and then posteriorly we have this is the mestroid process. More medially, we can see here this is the styloid process. So you can have a rough idea that the parotid gland is going to come in relation with the ramus of the mandible, especially its posterior border and the muscles attached there. It will also come in contact with the temporomandibular joint. It will also come in contact superiorly with the external acoustic meters and posteriorly, right? It will come in contact with the mestroid process and with the styloid process. Now next let us see uh, the muscles which uh, are going to be related to this parotid gland. We can see here this is the parotid gland. Again we can see here this structure is the external acoustic meatus which will come in relation to the base. And then anteriorly let us see here. This will be the anterior border and anteromedial surface will come in relation to this muscle over the ramus of mandible that is masseter. And then posteriorly we can see this will come in relation to mestroid process and this muscle and this muscle is sternocleidomestroid muscle. More deep if we go then we find this is the rough 
uh, outline of the parotid gland here we can see this is the styloid process with the muscles and ligaments attached to it and so this will be the coming in contact with the posterior medial surface and the in, uh, medial border if we especially look at the medial border where exactly it will be located so this is roughly demarcating the medial border and this is it coming in contact with the lateral wall of the pharynx these are the pharyngeal muscles we can see here right the superior constrictor muscle can be seen here so uh, this medial border will come in contact with the lateral wall of the pharynx now with this background now let us look at the relations in a cross section of the parotid gland to understand that let us start from here so first of all this is the anterior border so this is a cross section of the parotid gland right so this is anterior border and what do we have here obviously this will be the posterior border then we have medial border so this is the medial border right so this is anteriorly that means here we will have the mandible here we will have the mastoid process right so are you getting this so anterior border posterior border medial border now let us look at the three surfaces this surface will be the lateral or the superficial surface then we have this surface will be the anteromedial surface this one and then this surface we can see here will be the posterior medial surface which will be molded around two bony projections right so this is posterior medial surface now inside through this parotid gland we have three structures passing and these are from superficial to deep they are this is facial nerve this is retromandibular vein and this is external carotid artery now we will look at the relations of the three surfaces of the parotid gland to start with we will look at the superficial or the lateral surface as the name suggests superficial that means we will have to start with the skin right so the relations we can see here they will be to start with outside we will have skin what lies deep to skin superficial fascia what could be present in the superficial fascia i have not shown you here but there will be a nerve cutaneous nerve that is the great auricular nerve that supplies the skin over the parotid gland so we will have anterior branch of great auricular nerve and after that we have in the superficial fascia right we have a muscle here and that muscle is the platysma so we will also have the muscle platysma next to that what will we have next to that we will have this green structure which can be seen here that is the parotid fascia right which will be derived from deep cervical fascia and then next deep to that we will have the parotid group of lymph nodes the deep parotid lymph nodes we also have some lymph nodes which will be present in the superficial fascia and those are uh, the superficial parotid group of lymph nodes we have so we have two groups of lymph nodes superficial parotid and deep uh, parotid lymph nodes so to repeat again what are the structures that will come in relation to the superficial surface they are you start with the skin skin superficial fascia now let us see what will be present in the superficial fascia three things will be present one nerve lymph nodes and a muscle so the nerve will be the great auricular nerve its anterior branch lymph nodes will be superficial parotid group of lymph nodes and the muscle will be the which muscle that is the platysma then what do we have after superficial fascia what comes the deep fascia so we have deep fascia then we have the deep parotid lymph nodes so these are the relations of superficial surface now let us look at the uh, anteromedial but before that we can see here this is the medial border which will be coming in contact with the lateral wall of the pharynx so let us look at the anteromedial surface it is going to come in contact with the posterior border of ramus of mandible and the muscles which will be uh, inserted on the ramus of mandible on its outer surface right literally we will have the insertion of masseter and on its medial aspect near the angle of the mandible we have the medial pterygoid so just remember three m's are there right so mandible posterior ramus of mandible we have masseter muscle 
and we have the medial pterygoid muscle. So these are relations of anteromedial surface. And then we have relations of posterior medial surface. So first we will look at uh, this bony projection that is the mestroid process. On its lateral aspect we have insertion of sternocleidomestroid and on its medial aspect on a groove we have the insertion of posterior belly of digastric. So uh, the posterior medial surface that will be molded around two bony projections. One is the mestroid process other we will see here styloid process and how many muscles uh, attached to this uh, mestroid process that is sternocleidomestroid and posterior belly of digastric then we have this part of the posterior medial surface which is molded around this styloid process and we have you can see here the three muscles attached to the styloid process the styloglossus will be there stylopharynges would be there stylohyoid would be there a little deep to that we will have the neurovascular bundle here that is the internal carotid artery internal jugular vein and the last four cranial nerves obviously they will not come in contact with the parotid gland but they will be separated from the parotid gland by the styloid apparatus so these are the relations of the parotid gland so that's all for this video thanks for watching and if you have not subscribed, please subscribe my channel so that I can put more such videos. And if you want uh, the questions and answers in anatomy, all types of that, then visit the website that is anatomyqa.com. Thanks once again.